Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new to my channel, I am Key and this is Key's Planned Life. Excuse me, my dog has things all over my floor. So um, today we're going to talk about um, saving money and the type of savings accounts you should have. So let's get into this because I know some people are going to have some things to say and that is perfectly okay and all right by me. So... <laughs> First of all, congratulations on wanting to start to save money. Me, I was one of those late people. I, I've been set, trying to save all my life, but I was never consistent with it. And I was never so um, aware of how important it is to have a savings account as I am now. And that's because that was never taught to me. No one ever taught me how to save money and how to put money back up for hard times. It, I was more of a live in the moment type person versus me being now 39 years old and I'm saying, hey, I need to have this money saved up because I don't know what could happen. I want to have something to retire on and I just want to be able to not stress and worry about money. So I have made a decision to save and be consistent with my saving. So now the next question is what type of, well, the first question, not the next, the first question is what type of money should you, what type of savings account should you be, should you have? So speaking for me, I have a money market savings account. I have a retirement savings account and I have an emergency slash rainy day fund. Now, I know that some people may argue that your rainy day and your emergency fund should be separate. For me, it's not. It's together. And that is okay because I put <laughs> a nice amount away in my emergency and my rainy day fund. And just, you know, like, why may, why may people be controversial when it comes to that? It's because they say that emergency funds are supposed to be for things that might come up that you were not expecting. Like your, um, you might need car repairs that can't wait till your next pay period or you don't have the cash on hand. You might have a hospital bill that comes up that needs to be paid immediately. To me, that's the same day as a rainy day fund because that's money that I have put up just in case something arises or happens that I was not expecting. Whether it's me losing my job, whether it's me needing a car repair, whether it's a medical bill, whether there's a bill that popped up that I forgot to pay, I can go into that emergency slash rainy day fund and use that money. Now, I also have a retirement fund. This retirement fund is not to be touched. This retirement fund is strictly for me to retire off of one day. So I'm real, real adamant about putting money into this fund because I want to be able to be in my 60s or 70s and just be able to not have to worry about taking care of myself because my kids hopefully will have their own spots and they will be having their own space and they can take care of themselves. So um, I do... Um, I am really a beast about putting money into my retirement. Um, and I have a money market savings account, which is a high yield savings account. I was with Capital One, but I found something a little better. Um, I'm not ready to share who I bank with yet. Maybe I will share in the future, but as of right now, I'm just not ready to share that with, with people. Um, just because sometimes um, YouTube and the internet can do can can be a little petty and be a little mean and and do things so i've learned that being a youtuber for 12 years so um i'm not ready to share that yet but i will in another video give you some really good places to bank with that offer high uh interest rates um but my money market is something that i really put money in and i'm and really into investing in just because that is going to also be used for when i retire i will also be um, making sure that i am living comfortable i might not be rich by the time i retire but i will be able to live comfortable so we're going to get into the three types of savings you have your retirement which is your long-term savings account your rainy day which is kind of like a short-term slash long-term account and then your emergency which to me is a short-term, long-term account too. It depends on you and what your need is in your household. So um, I'm, if you see me looking down, that's because I did take notes. And um, rainy day funds, um, 
some people say that you need about 500 to, to 1500 no 500 to a thousand dollars in your rainy day fund for me that i'm not i'm i don't agree i feel like you need to never stop capsizing your rainy day fund because no no um, no bill or no no emergency is the same so where a car one car repair may cost five hundred dollars there may be another car repair that costs five thousand dollars but all you have saved up in your emergency slate or rainy day fund is fifteen hundred dollars that's not going to take care of your repairs so i say contribute to that as much as you can so it doesn't have to be a thousand dollars it can be two thousand dollars it can be three thousand dollars it can be ten thousand dollars do what you feel would cover some things that need that would need to be repaired in your household me i look at the fact that i drive a 2018 kill so so i look into the, what repair costs would be for certain things on my car or i look at how much a medical bill would be if i needed to go into the doctor for something specific or i look at um even just my highest bill that I have now, um, I look at that and that helps me determine how much I want to put in my rainy day fund. And for me, it's a rainy day slash emergency. So also, the um, this account is due in part to having the ability to get you to your next paycheck. So this account is kind of... I, I don't know. I, I just don't agree with that. I feel like a rainy day fund shouldn't be the fund that you need to get you to your next paycheck. Your rainy day fund should be the money that you have put up that's a cushion just in case anything arises. Whether it's, um, like I said, whether it's a doctor's visit. Like, for instance, I had to take my fur baby to the emergency room and his money that he had put up in his cash envelope didn't cover that. So I had to go dip into my rainy day fund to cover that. And that, to me, was an emergency slash rainy day. Um, now, it, I, I also feel like that funds for this is things that require immediate or unexpected attention like i said and that you should have as much as you can put up i wouldn't recommend having that type of money in your house um i have this thing that once i get to a hundred dollars saved up for my emergency fund it goes direct deposited into the emergency fund account i do not keep that type of cash in my household just because number one anything can happen in your house your house can flood you can catch on fire somebody could break into your home anything could happen although you know i pray over my house so i'm trusting that that would never happen but things like this do arise and do happen and just when you think it couldn't happen to you that is when it happens so i wouldn't dare keep that type of money in my home just because i work hard for my money and i don't want somebody to be able to come and take it or i don't want it to be caught in a fire and there's nothing i can do with it and i have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in my home that is going up in flames and <laughs> yeah so um i say if you want to put a cap on a rainy day fund at least cap it off to maybe three to five thousand dollars is if you're going to cap it off me i don't have a cap on what i'm trying what i want to have in that account now i do have a ideal and a number that i want to have that where i feel safe and comfortable by the end of the year what i'm trying to save up but that's not a cap on it i'm able to add more even if i meet that goal before the year is up i'm able to add more money into that account um your emergency fund it could either be a short term or learn long term um account like i said and that's depending on how you look at it an emergency fund is used when life throws a major curveball such as the loss of a job to me that's an emergency too so you see why i say that i have an emergency rainy day slash emergency fund but some people like to keep it separate and that's fine um you should have between three to six months worth of a savings put away and the reason being this fund should be equal to your expenses so if you if your expenses are two thousand dollars a month you for three months you should have six thousand dollars saved up and that would cover your expenses for three months um for 12 for for six months you need to have twelve thousand dollars saved up and that should cover your expenses for six months so um 
your your emergency fund should cover three to six months expensive expenses now me i am trying to cover at least a year expenses because sometimes you don't find a job within three months and sometimes you don't find a job within six months sometimes it might take a minute for you to get a job so you're going to need to be able to cover expenses so i have it set up i'm investing in my emergency fund slash rainy day fund well over that six month or that three month or that year mark i'm trying to make sure that it's it's okay for however long i might decide that i just don't want to i want to take a year off of work i don't want to work no more okay that that i might just wake up and decide that i need to have something <laughs> but you know you need to have at least three to six months worth of expenses in that particular account um let's see it's important to have a uh an ideal of your expenses so sit down write down how much your expenses are um and times that times three times that times six times that times 12 and let that be your guide of exactly how much money you need to save in case something arises and you may lose your job today or tomorrow because let's think about it if we lose our jobs today or tomorrow just really think about it in your savings account or your checking account do you really have that type of money saved up to where you feel comfortable that you would survive? For me, I don't feel like I would be, right now, speaking in the presence, I don't feel like I would be able to survive off of what's in my account right now. I feel like it would be a struggle like never before if I lost my job today or tomorrow or I got sick and I could not work. And I don't want to live like that. And even when you have things like I have things set up with my job that in the event that I turn ill, that they pay, they cut me a check every two weeks, that's still, they only cut me half of what I make. So that's still not going to cover my day-to-day -day bills. So sit down, think of, count, total up all your expenses, times it by three, times it by six, times it by 12, and let that be your ideal of the number that you need to have saved up in your emergency fund. Retirement retirement fund is just that it is the money that you're going to use to retire with it's the money that you have saved up and saved up and saved up and now you've hit the 60 or 65 or 70 year mark and you've just decided that you've given this world all you can when it comes to working a job a nine to five and you're ready to be home and just live your best life for travel but you ain't got no money put up to do that so how you gonna travel you're not going nowhere unless you have a retirement put up put your money up save your money um invest in yourself to where if that time does come you can live comfortable and you don't have to worry about how you're going to make ends meet because let's be honest social security is not guaranteed by the time we get 60 65 70 years old that's not guaranteed to us you know, the way this economy is right now, that is not, that's not money guaranteed. So you need to have your own backup plan and you need to have your own system going for yourself because you don't want to be a sitting duck out here trying to figure out where your life went wrong and what you could have done to make it better. So retirement funds are a very good thing to have. But as far as starting and just really um, putting your feet in the water, I would say just start with a simple savings account. And I would recommend a high yield savings account such as Capital One's 360 checking account. Just because it's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and you can transfer money back and forth to your main accounts. Now, it does take uh, one to three business days for the money to transfer over, but the interest rates on those accounts are really, really nice. I know one time I had, um, I want to say I had $4,000 in one account and I made $9 interest just for that $4,000 that was in that account for that month. So that was pretty darn good. Um, the whole idea of a saving is not to just let your money sit there, but let your money work for you. Let it grow. Let it increase in revenue. I don't want a savings account where my money's just sitting there, but I'm not making money by it sitting there. I want to make money. I want to see myself making money while it's sitting there. And I don't want a checking account that just gives me 1% interest. What is that? What is 1% interest when you have six or $7,000 in your account? That is nothing. 
absolutely nothing so if i'm gonna put my money in your bank you bet your ducks that i'm gonna have a nice interest rate and you're gonna you're gonna help me build my money up also while we're talking i would advise you to i have a retirement uh mute um stocks i have um brokerage um accounts those are good investments as well and you don't have to people think it are for you to have stocks and bonds you have to have a ton of money you do not have a ton of money now sure enough i started off when i started off investing in stocks and brokerage funds i started off with 500 dollars. that was my start off um but you don't have to start off with that you can take a hundred dollars and buy some stock hell twitter is going for like when i well, when i bought twitter it was going for like $16, 16 bucks. I bought stock in Home Depot. I've gotten stock in Lowe's. I've gotten stock in At Home. I got stock in JC Pennies. I got stock in Comcast. I got stock in AT&T and I don't even use AT&T. I have stock in Delta Airlines, United Airlines. And those at the time, because people say don't buy when the crash market is crashing. I bought and it went up and I'm okay. So um you don't have to have a ton of money to invest in these stocks and that's another way to say to save money and watch your money grow and work for you but for first timers that are have made the decision to save you hear the change, change. that's because i do flip it fridays i transfer all my change and stuff over for flip it fridays but for first timers that are actually trying to save i would advise you to just invest in a just a um regular savings account that has a high yield interest rate on it and i'm finding out that a lot of the online um savings accounts have nice interest rates that come along with them and i'm not mad at that so i am going to get out of here i hope this was helpful i don't know if it was but i hope it was i i just think it's very important to save as much as you can for how long you can because you don't know what's going to happen if corona this corona mess has not taught us anything it has taught us to expect the unexpected and have all your ducks in a row and things that i found that were important to me are no longer important to me like you see these bags in the background they're not that important to me no more i'm glad i got them they nice they cute but that's not important to me anymore all the stuff that i have is not as important as it was before all this hit because what do you do when you ain't got no toilet paper what do you do when you ain't got no hand sanitizer what do you do when pe people are not taking um cash anymore they're only dealing with debit cards and all this and you can't work and you have to file unemployment but then you have to wait for unemployment to even give you unemployment and approve your un approve your unemployment so now your bills are continuing and they're steady going on but you don't have any money saved up to cover those bills and even yeah eventually they'll probably approve your unemployment but those bills not gonna stop and they're not gonna wait for nothing and nobody so you need to have a plan and you can replace the money you took out your savings account once that unemployment hit have your ducks in a row it's so important and it's so vital to our survival and also try to um have separate places that you can put your money as well i have separate places that i put my money my money does not just sit in one area it sits in multiple areas because there it is okay to have more than one savings or checking account it's okay to to have stocks in one or more places it's okay so do that as well but i would advise you to look do your homework on different savings accounts different interest rates that they offer and if that bank is good with people i would see about that as well because if you're not good with people i'm not gonna bank with you period so um yeah i'm gonna get out of here i will see you guys in the next video remember to think smart and spend smarter bye budget for february our goals for february um what i plan on doing different for february so this is our february um